Hi, everyone. June 22nd, 2021. I never saw this until today. And guess who is narrating this 52nd, oh, whatever. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that, not everybody's starting out from the same place. So if we're all getting the same amount, but you started out back there and I started out over here, we can get the same amount, but you're still going to be that far back behind me. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. Nice music that lulls you into a very peaceful, calm state, right? Okay. Kamala Harris, comrade Kamala Harris, who will be the president soon enough. Okay, so how do you get people to start at the same place? How do you get people all at the same starting line. The only way that you could do it is to bring everyone down to the same level, including financially impoverish the people. There are so many factors, so many factors uh, that would need to be adjusted, and it's impossible to adjust them. You know, you, you would need every individual in that society to have the same kind of parenting, the same kind of health, physical, mental, the same uh, growing up in the exact same environment and having the same life experience. That is literally impossible to do. So what do you have to do here? No, you're not going to be giving the resources and support to people that need them. You're going to bring everybody down to the same level. And that includes um, academically, that includes the getting rid of the elimination of advanced classes in public schools, which they're doing, getting rid of uh, university college entrance exams like the SAT that is also being done. Kamala Harris, big supporter of Black Lives Matter, big supporter of critical race theory, a Marxist, has a lot of communist ties. So I've, I just kind of bumped into articles today. Why is no one calling out Kamala Harris's communist ties? I guess this is not a surprise to you all, huh? No. Let me just read one little piece that I, this is different from what I'm going to read, but communist affiliated husband, Harris's husband, Doug Emoff, works for the law firm DLA Piper, which boasts nearly 30 years of experience in China and over 140 lawyers dedicated to its China Investment Services branch. You can read this. Uh, I don't want this to be a very, very long video, but I did post a series of videos on the connection between Black Lives Matter and the CCP, the Communist 
uh, Party in China, the investments of the Communist Party in China here in the United States, how it all works. Okay. Um, I'm going to get to another article. This is just one little, little bit of the tie to the Communist Party that Kamala Harris has. Now, before I get to that actual article, I want you to understand that the Department of Education has, this is a national program, the critical race theory, or call it uh, diversity, inclusion, equity. Now, equity, not a good thing. And this critical race theory, the diversity, inclusion, equity, that is a Marxist program all under the umbrella of the Department of Education, elementary and secondary education. And I will link below. Uh, this is one of the reasons why parents, you're not being listened to. And there's another reason, which I'm going to post a video on, all of those who are pulling the strings behind the curtain. The school board members are puppets. They don't listen to you. They don't care about your children. They are implementing Marxism in our school schools nationwide to indoctrinate the young to become, well, Marxists. Projects that incorporate racially, ethnically, culturally, and linguistically diverse perspectives into teaching and learning. Our nation deserves an ambitious whole of government equity agenda. So, yep, talk about the 1619 Project, which you will listen to the left uh, mainstream media, and they say, this says critical race theory is not being implemented in the schools, and nobody knows what it is. Uh, the 1619 Project is not being implemented in the schools. It Look, we are being gaslit on a scale that is truly staggering. And the gaslighting of the American people, how any American who has been around for, I don't know, maybe four decades, five decades, could possibly believe that we are such a racist nation when we have come so far. Well, that's, that, that in itself is frightening because when you have a population of people who are just not thinking or don't care, well, these people, the communists, can just bring in anything. But also, Abram Kendi, you know, he's not a scholar. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, the 1619 Project, how is it a New York Times journalist writes this 1619 Project, develops it? The premise, the premise is false. So if, you're, if your premise is false, I don't think the whole project is working. One of, one of the premises, the Revolutionary War was not fought um, for independence from Britain. It was fought to maintain slavery. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but this is just, you know, the document that proves that this is nationwide. And identity safe learning environment, well, it's not too safe for the white students now who are, well, the oppressors and the non-white students are the oppressed, the victim. You can't get anywhere because of your peers who are white oppressing you. And, well, racism now, apparently it's permanent, <clears throat> permanent. It's a permanent disease um, that has uh, 
well, every white person has that disease. Now, if we were, if racism is permanent, how the hell did we get so far? Uh, there's so many obviouses. I can't stand arguing obviouses that they're, they're so infuriating. But a whole lot of very sick narcissists, they bring up the obvious and they just smile when you're floundering in the obvious because how do you... Okay, well, this is what we have today. Um, so they're looking for uh, applicants to support projects that incorporate culturally and linguistically responsive learning environments. Um, you can read all of this, but this is essentially what we've been listening to with parents trying to fight the critical race theory or the, call it what you want, I don't care. The diversity inclusion, the equity, critical race theory, um, 1619 project, all of this is just gaslighting the American people who know full well that, boy, we have come a long way, baby. And then to indoctrinate the young into a whole new, into a whole new world without freedom. Okay, so um, they call it civics education. And this civics education is vital to protecting the nation's democracy. Okay, the founding of this country was a constitutional republic. It was not a democracy. Americans don't seem to care very much about that. Civics education, based on a lie, based on a, a faulty foundation, that's not very good civics, is it? But here, <laughs> they need it now, especially at a time when its core institutions and values are threatened by misinformation. Misinformation. No polity can make wise decisions if its citizens do not know how to separate fact from opinion and how to gather and weigh relevant evidence. Wow. Okay, they're going to be teaching the students how, how to read the news. Funding efforts to enhance news literacy should be a high priority for governments. <laughs> yeah. Governments that are filled with an awful lot of people who are just spouting lie after lie after lie, the mainstream media, throwing out all of its propaganda. Yeah, it's a high priority for governments in communist nations. This is especially the case with people who are going online for the first time. For those individuals, it is hard to distinguish false from real news, and they need to learn how to evaluate news sources not accept at face value everything they see on social media or digital news sites. Helping people become better consumers of online information is crucial as the world moves toward digital immersion. Yes. Have Big Brother teach you how to read the news. So... The applicants propose projects that describe how they will foster critical thinking and promote student engagement in civics education through professional development or other activities designed to support students in evaluating sources and evidence using standards of proof, understanding their own biases when reviewing information, as well as uncovering and recognizing bias in primary and secondary sources, synthesizing information into cogent 
communications and understanding how inaccurate information may be used to manipulate individuals and developing strategies to recognize accurate and inaccurate information. Yeah, it's a whole new America. Okay, the link will be below. Um, you know, I was listening to Dr. Kathleen Brush, who for 10 years has studied racism uh, throughout the world. And here, this is what she writes. Turn on the TV, open a newspaper, racism, racism, racism. America is being painted as a nation of hate and racism. A new book, Racism and Anti-Racism in the World Before and After 1945, written by Kathleen Brush, will surprise many because it builds a compelling case that America is not a racist nation. It is instead a leading anti-racist nation that has tried to compel others to commit to the same How is it that Americans just listen to this and they... Okay, she also writes, I was crushed when reading about Americans that were not proud of their country because of its racism. I have studied racism in the world for over 10 years, including traveling and working in 111 countries. America's demonstrable commitment to anti-racism is something to be proud of. Yeah. But instead, an awful lot of people are turning, this, uh, turning our history on its head. And now we're suddenly this phenomenally racist country today, currently. And that's why they need to indoctrinate the students and have those safe environments for the students because we're so racist. Do you know what this is doing to all of these children? And I've posted on my channel, you know, some school board meetings and some students speaking. It's, it's, it's having an incredibly damaging effect on relationships, a damaging effect on all of the progress that we actually did make, a uh, damaging effect on families, you have biracial students, and they're being told that white people are racist, it's a permanent disease, and they're the oppressor. So their white parent is an oppressor, and their black parent is the oppressed. So their white parent is oppressing their black parent. Are you kidding me? This is going on. But, and how, how is it possible that this has actually taken root? Americans sitting back, doing nothing. She also writes, a hellhole of discrimination. Every year, about a million people of color legally immigrate to America. Haven't they heard? The United States is a hellhole of discrimination. Or do they ignore the propaganda because they know that America has the most successful female and minority populations in the world? African Americans, black Americans, are the most prosperous and educated black population in the world. They also have the highest household income of all but one of the 50 black majority nations. Black Americans, I have a problem with saying African Americans because not every black American is from Africa. Okay, or even has descendants. Well, well I guess we're all descendants, but okay, forget about that. Black Americans had their own nation. If they had their own nation, they would have the 15th largest GDP in the world African-American GDP is three times larger than Nigeria, the African country with the largest GDP. Nigeria has four times as many people 
The GDP of U.S. Latinos is higher than any country in Latin America. This includes Brazil, which has three times as many people. So what the hell is going on in our country? When prior to Obama, we were just, well, it, it's been... It's been a progression of healing of the racism in our country. Obama comes in, race card played, race card played. Oh, he was supposed to be the unifier. Jesus walking on water. Uh -huh. What did he do? Caused an awful lot of division. Okay. Kamala Harris, pro-China communist is a pro-China communist. All right, this is, uh, there was an, an interview with Trevor London, an expert on radical left and Marxist political influence. Um, this is a long article. I'm going to try to read it very, very quickly, but we've got a communist in the White House. Uh, Biden, soon enough, will be gone. Kamala Harris will be president. Um, there are so many ties. So much infiltration, not just in Washington, D.C., in our government, but school boards and town council, uh, city council, local state government, and they're working it, boy. And, you know, well, let's get to it. So um, her voting record left of Bernie Sanders, but she's presented in mainstream media as a moderate Democrat. Her ties to many communists. All right, it goes back to her childhood, just like Obama, right? Her parents were far left activists who, sport, uh, who supported Fidel Castro, uh, Che Guevara. Her father was a Marxist. Her lover, former Speaker of the California State Assembly, Willie Brown, who she had an affair with, had very strong ties to communist China. He was involved with the American Communist Party for many, many years. They got him elected to public office. They financed him. He supported their causes and endorsed their events. Now, based on my research, a whole lot of this is right on. There are some things that I would need to verify, but hell, I'll point them out, and if you want to verify it, go for it. All right. Harris, very close to a man called Steve Phillips. He is a very wealthy lawyer in San Francisco, a former supporter of the League of Revolutionary Struggle, a Maoist pro-Chinese communist group, and a close associate. He was a student radical, and he was known, he was like known as a a leading um, Marxist-Leninist, Stanford University, with Kamala's sister, Maya. Steve Phillips married into a very rich family, multi-billions, the Sandler family. Susan Sandler, he married. Huh. Uh, he used that money to promote far-left causes and Democratic politicians and support modern-day communist groups like Left Roots. Now, I've brought some of these organizations up. This is the um, Liberation Road. And got the League of Revolutionary Struggle. This is on the site Marxist.org. We also have um, standing together to organize a revolutionary movement, STORM, Maoist-leaning revolutionary group. It says active from 1995 to 2002, but many of these groups are still active. They changed their name. Okay, but look at who's a member. Van Jones. Van Jones. Obama administration. Name sound familiar? It should. And also, the Sandler Phillips Center. Steve Phillips, Susan Sandler. The chair 
of uh, this center. She was the first and largest donor behind the independent efforts to support Barack Obama's presidential campaign. She was also the lead investor in the independent activities supporting Kamala Harris's 2010 campaign for Attorney General, Cory Booker's 2013 election to the Senate. She is a national leader in education reform and has served as a board member of several progressive nonprofit organizations, including the Democracy Alliance. And here's Steve Phillips. He's got a social justice media organization, Democracy in Color. All right. And when you look at all of these people, then you have to do the digging to um, find out because, you know, these little summaries of, you know, the chairs or the board's uh, history, then they're, they're generally sanitized. So, um, and just because they happen to have, you know, on the board an Andy Wong doesn't mean anything until you do some digging into Andy Wong. But San Francisco has a huge um, Chinese-American population. Okay, so let's go back now. That's Steve Phillips. Marries into wealthy family. And isn't it also interesting that all of these people have become wealthy due to capitalism, but they want to destroy that. Because they've already made an awful lot of money. They don't care about anybody else. And in fact, I was glad to see in this interview that uh, that's stated. It's ego. It's power that they want. All right. Yeah, it, it, Kamala Harris, really? Oh, she wants to just give the resources and support for these kids so that they can start at the same starting line, right? Bullshit. The woman is all about herself. All right, so, yeah, he was a student radical Marxist-Leninist radical at Stanford University with Kamala's sister, um, marries into a very rich, rich family. Banking, I think. I'm not sure. But multi-billions. He got Kamala elected to the district attorney position of San Francisco, attorney general for California, U.S. senator for California, and now into the White House. Very close friend, uh, that Harris has is Latifa Simon, uh, a Kamala protege, another communist far leftist woman. She was closely associated with Mao's group, banding together to organize a revolutionary project or storm. Simon is very close friends with Alicia Garza, the founder of Black Lives Matter and a very close associate of pro-Chinese Communist Party people in the San Francisco Bay Area. Kamala's whole history is associated with pro-Chinese communists. Even her husband's law firm has connections to the Communist Party of China. Mao Maoism in America relies very much on racial politics. They don't do class here. They're doing race here. The American Maoist movement is heavily connected to the black radicals in America. That's part of the series that I posted, uh, the black liberation movement is a Maoist movement. All right. So the American Maoist movement, heavily connected to the black radicals in America, the Asian American radicals, the Filipinos, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese Americans, the Latino movement with radical 
Chicanos, Mexicans, Latin Americans. The black radicals, who didn't really like the Soviet Union, were very attracted to Mao's China. They saw Maoism as a revolution of people of color. They saw the Russians as too white. So they saw the Maoists as closer to their orientation. Just, hey, uh, use race. As Mao, use class. So the Chinese Progressive Association is an organization in San Francisco. It's a community organizing group that is very heavily involved in voter registration in Chinatown. And it really is a dominant political force in San Francisco. Now the Chinese Progressive Association works very closely with the Chinese consulate in San Francisco. They've worked together for 40 years. Uh, in about 2015, when Black Lives Matter got started, the Chinese Progressive Association set up a group called Asians for Black Lives. Asians for Black Lives is the link between the Chinese consulate in San Francisco and Black Lives Matter movement. The Chinese Progressive Association funds Black Lives Matter projects. It funds Alicia Garza, which I also, in that, I think, five-part series that I posted, you know, and I, that's one of the reasons why I said, yeah, most of what I am reading is right on. Okay, so it funds Alicia Garza, the leader of Black Lives Matter. Alicia Garza is very closely affiliated with the Chinese Progressive Association, and these people have sent delegations to China. They seek guidance from China. They work closely with the Chinese consulate in San Francisco, and the Asians for Black Lives even wrote the manual for Black Lives Matter, the sort of radical Marxist manual that guides their actions. There are very deep ties between Communist China and Black Lives Matter and Kamala Harris. Oh, she so throws her full body weight of support to Black Lives Matter and even said on uh, the Colbert show that she wants Black Lives Matter to never give up, to keep going on the street, to keep no mention of the billions of property damage no mention of all of the people who got killed in those right. No, no, they're peaceful, right? Black Lives Matter. Okay. Oh, well, it's amazing the stupidity in our country where you can't even have adult conversation about anything anymore. So, Black Lives Matter, um, some of the people tied to China. Black Lives Matter is run by a pro-Chinese communist group called Liberation Road. But there is another pro-Chinese communist group in America called the Freedom Road Socialist Organization. They were once the same organization, but they split. That is why they both have road. I, that road. The China, Chinese Communist Party likes the road. You know, the Belt and Road, Silk Road, all these roads. Okay. So, but the organization that started the riots in Minneapolis was Freedom Road Socialist Organization. The leader of that organization, Stephanie Urich, vowed the day Trump was inaugurated uh, that her job was to bring down Trump by making the country ungovernable. Her wife, Jess uh, Sudan, was the woman who organized the riots I have on tape her boasting about the joy that she felt when the police station was burnt to the ground, boasting about the looting and the rioting, how it was an integral part of the movement, that it was part of what they intended to do. Now, they burnt down Minneapolis, they burnt down um, Kenosha, Wisconsin, they started riots in Chicago, New York, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Jacksonville. Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, Bay Area, 
The riots that they didn't start were basically started by the other pro-Chinese communist group, Liberation Road. Almost all of the rioting was organized and run by pro-Chinese communists, and it was deliberately violent right from the start. So George Floyd was perfect because the headquarters of Freedom Road, socialist organization, is in Minneapolis. But it was also caught on film. Everybody saw it. So it was very easy to start the riots. But if it hadn't been George Floyd, it would have been somebody else. The riots were planned from 2016. In 2016. All around election year. So Steve Phillips, the very wealthy communist behind Kamala Harris, was also behind Barack Obama. Uh... Kamala Harris was perfect, half black, half Indian woman, and Marxist. And when she ran for president, she failed. It was a big setback. Um, Bernie had to be stopped because he was too obviously a communist. So Joe Biden, they thought, was the only one to stop him. Uh, they engineered Kamala Harris to become the vice president, presidential candidate. And as soon as they need to, they'll get rid of Joe Biden. They're just hanging on to him right now, so it looks good. Joe Biden, everybody knows, has, well, don't want to diagnose him, but dementia? All right. Um, and even Trump and Obama, the, you know, the doctor for the presidents, the doctor for Trump and Obama uh, openly called for Biden to get tested. You know, go through that cognitive test because it's obvious that something's very wrong. Well, when they're done with Biden, who becomes president? Comrade Harris. All goes back to Jesse Jackson, the Rainbow Coalition in the 80s, 84, 88. Steve Phillips was a big part of the Rainbow Coalition. Uh, Rainbow Coalition, a mouse, communist coalition uh, from the League of Revolutionary Struggle, the Communist Workers' Party, the Freedom Road, Socialist Organization, and Line of March. It was a communist operation. Okay, Harris uh, is an updated rainbow coalition strategy. Main players to get Harris into the presidency, Obama and Steve Phillips. Biden, very expendable. They know it. So when he's no longer needed, they get rid of him. Kamala enters the stage. Both are puppets, but Biden, well, according to this, is ineffective. Um, Kamala is essentially the president now. She, too, is a puppet, but she'll be more effective than Biden. We are in a revolution right now. A revolution is taking place in our country right now. If Americans don't flip on their uh, critical thinking switch in their head, start getting wise and hip to what's happening here, it's not going to be fun. You're going to see a big opening of the southern border. You're going to see massive influx of illegal immigrants over the southern border into Texas. You're going to see a destruction of the U.S. military. The U.S. military is going to be weakened way more than it ever has before. It'll embolden China, Iran, Russia, Cuba, affecting the balance of power in the world. We will begin to just kind of fade away. Uh, China now has that friend in the White House. Harris's economic policy, taxes will raise, will increase, will be very high. A move towards universal basic income, very deep socialist, is Kamala. Now, she will implement Green New Deal, uh, which will destroy U.S. energy industry, wreck the U.S. economy, U.S. military budget, you know, I have to wonder sometimes when I read this kind of stuff that does Trevor Loudon know about the New World Order, the globalists? And, okay. 
Harris is a tool, making an awful lot of money, getting an awful lot of power for selling out this country and selling out all of the young. Forget about your freedom. Harris is the tool to destroy it. She doesn't care about you. These Marxists, they want power, and they get rich. Like, oh, what's her name? You know, the other founder of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I, I, her name just slipped my mind. You know, the one with all of the real estate. And man, it's so obvious that you've just got these, these friggin', you know, con artists working the people. And there's a success. That's what's. I don't like. So, balance of power shift and United States, a third rate power, which will empower China. Yes, I said that. Cuba, Venezuela. Yeah, Biden and Venice. Uh, there's stuff going on there. Biden has uh, eliminated all of what Trump was doing with Venezuela. All of it is just a freaking play that we're watching. But you know, you may as well have a Chinese Communist Party head in the White House with Harris. So, her involvement with the critical race theory, which is not really a very big surprise, um, it's Marxism. Race rather than class. And, well, how do you get to that equity that she was talking about? How do you get there? How do you get? Oh, we're both standing on the mountain together. By impoverishing the people in the country, bringing them down to a level of poverty. That's where we're headed. So, you know, they want to overturn the system. Uh, capitalism is white, and they want to destroy it. They want to. It's not socialism, though. It's communism that they're bringing in. You know, socialist, communist. The government controls all the means of production, distribution, exchange, everything. You got a small business? Huh. The government is going to be, well, the boot on your neck. Um, they control virtually everything, the press, the entertainment, the media. This is where we are now. The wealth of the capitalists and the white population, they want to redistribute that to the people of color. Keep a whole bunch for themselves, of course. You know, um, socialism in other countries have failed because of America, because America sabotaged it. That's their belief. Uh, blockades and sanctions sabotaged it. Get rid of America. Socialism will magically be a success. They're just exploiting this to get power for themselves. Nobody is more powerful than the communist leader in a communist country. Uh, but they all agree. They all hate what they think of as white racist America. They want to destroy that system. Um, equality under socialism cannot be achieved unless everybody gets poor, except for the leaders of the party. Um They'll be filthy rich. Man, oh, man. Well, there's much more, okay? But, you know, th this is happening right now. It's happening right now for those Americans who just want to roll their eyes and claim that everything is a conspiracy theory. You know, it's like you destroy. You destroy people's lives. You're so complicit 
with, you know, forget about us, the baby boomers, because we're going to be dead. They want us dead and out. It's the young that they focus on. And the young will never have freedom. What could be more important? What could be more important? Going on vacation. Hanging out with my friends. Streaming a movie on Netflix. They want to indoctrinate the children to increase drug use, to break down law and order, to destroy organized religion, uh, change American traditional values into social values, so socialist values. Um, it's all part of the Marxist Maoist tactics to destroy a nation. Then they indoctrinate children, and that's going to be in line with their revolutionary goals. And if you don't know anything about China under Mao, then I suggest you do some research. Democratic Party has been taken over. We know that. We see it. It's very different than it was not too long ago. So it is a left takeover. And, you know, the idiocy of all of this, that's what upsets me the most because it is. It's obvious. It's stupidity. It's gaslighting the American people get them to believe that we're so racist and it's it's it, and it's a racism that's permanent really well that permanent racism you can't ever eradicate from those white people somehow the black americans sure did rise and they're in positions of power and there are a whole lot of wealthy, very wealthy, and then in the upper middle class, oh, and then the middle class, how did that come about if we are such a racist nation? Americans, please start to speak out. Left, right, doesn't matter. Get out of that dichotomous thinking. Your team is better than the other team. And man, we're in such deep trouble. <laughs>